little disc for posterity. Answers to quiz number, actually it's, I called it quiz zero in my handout because quiz one is a quiz that comes later. The transformations quiz. Uh, y equals the square root of x. Well, let's see. We did do that on the day we did the basic functions lesson. I called it the wounded seagull. I don't have it memorized. I just derive it. I know that the square root of zero is zero. The square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. And the square root of nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is 3. I know that it looks like that. And then I say to myself, self, how has this graph been moved? Well, in terms of replacement, replacements, they've replaced an x with an x minus 2, and that moves the graph to what? To right? And in terms of, well, what's that plus 5 mean? That means 5 up. It means they replaced the y with the y minus 5. But when they plus the 5 over to the other side, it became a 5 plus 5, 5 up. So 2 right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. I had a student in my other class, by the way, say, Mr. Duick, I glanced at that. I thought that was 5 high. If you use this number, to use as your five high, I'll give you full marks because the graph paper is a bit wonky. You have no idea how tough it is to type graph paper in Word. I didn't actually type this, a friend of mine did, but it's a bit of a pain. Getting the numbers lined up is yucky. One, two right, one, two, three, four, five up. Two right, one, two, three, four, five up. Two right is off my graph paper. Is it a long ways off my graph paper or one square off my graph paper? then I won't freak. On my test, if you're doing a question and you end up a long ways off my graph paper, you've made a mistake. I, I made sure all the questions don't do that. And in fact, if you end up anything off my graph paper on a test, be a little nervous because I think I made sure that almost all of them fit on the graph paper. I might have been able to go one square over. So uh, two right, one, two, three, four. I think it looks like this, five up. One mark for the blue graph, one mark for the red graph, half mark off for each point that's in the wrong place. Two wrong points, sorry, zero. Example two. Ooh. What's that a graph of? I, I know what that is. It's a, a, a square, no, it's not a square root. It's got a square root, but there's also that something minus x squared. That was a semicircle. What's the radius of this semicircle? Sorry? Three. Where is it centered? Semicircle with a radius of three centered at zero, zero. So I said, there's my center. Three left. Three up, three right. There's my semicircle. One more. How has this graph been moved? Well, what does that mean? Two to the left. What does that mean? Four. So the easy way to do this, the quickest way to do this, is actually not to move these three points. You could. To move the center. Two left, one, two, three, four up. My new center is there. Radius three, radius three, radius three. That's the quickest way to do it. But you could have just moved each point as well and said, it's a semicircle connect. By the way, you'll notice for the center, I put a little x, not a dot. If I put a dot, that tells the marker, that's on the graph. If I put an x, that tells the marker, I'm just using that as a placeholder. It's not part of my graph, but I'm using that to get the actual graph, for what it's worth. Same deal, one mark for each graph, half mark off for each point that's wrong. Yes? Right now, today, on this quiz, no. On a test, yes? Because I just told you now. 
She said, if you put a dot at the center on the quiz here, will I take marks off? Not on the quiz, but on your test. If you put a dot, you're telling me that's part of my graph. That would appear if I graphed it, and it's not. I'll get fussier and give you better explanations as the unit progresses. Okay, turn the page. Example three, f of x equals absolute value. Oh, I know what that looks like. It goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 2, 2, 3, 3, negative 3, 3. In fact, it looks like that. And then they want me to graph y equals f, a little negative 1 that looks like an exponent, bracket x, close bracket. What the heck was that? Oh, that was a stupid symbol. I remember Mr. Duke went on a big rant about that. He hates it. Ah, but he's stuck with it because he's not in charge of the world yet. Um, what did that symbol mean? Ah, this is the inverse. How do I find an inverse? That's my abbreviation for switching the X and Y around. You can come up with your own if you want to. So, uh, zero, 0, will become, oh, zero, 0. It stays where it is. What was the fancy word for a point that stayed where it was? Invariant. Uh, oh, and 1, 1 will become, oh, 1, 1. Strange. Oh, you know what? This whole arm will be invariant. But this arm here, instead of negative 1, positive 1, positive 1, negative 1. And instead of negative 2, positive 2, Positive 2, negative 2. Oh, you know what? That arm is going to end up like that. There was a way to test that you'd done the inverse correctly. If you drew the dotted line y equals x, it should be symmetrical. Except there's a problem. The grid paper that my friend made up, you'll notice each square is actually not a square. What shape is that? It's a rectangle. These are kind of distorted a bit, so they don't quite you know, look as pretty as you might. Although that's okay too, because Eric, on the graphing calculators that you'll get someday, if you don't have one already, the screens are rectangular as well. They actually distort the graphs as well. We'll talk about how, actually, that graph isn't quite so slanty in real life if you use square graph paper. Same idea, one mark for each graph, half mark off for each point. Graph number four. How many marks is number four worth? Three. How many graphs did they ask you to do? Three. Oh, how about one mark for each graph? How about a half mark off for each point that's wrong? That would make sense to me. Let's see. Oh, and it says label each graph. In other words, make sure you know which one is which. I'm going to use colors, so I'm going to start out by going blue with this guy. As soon as I see a negative, I know it's a reflection. The real question is, is it a vertical or a horizontal reflection? Well, where is the negative? Is it right next to the x inside the function? Then it's, then it's vertical. This is a vertical reflection, which means that all of my heights are going to become their opposites. Spencer, how high am I right here? It's a trick question. What's the opposite of 0? It's a trick question. Invariant. But positive 1 high is going to become negative 1 high. Connect them. Positive 4 high is going to become negative 4 high. Connect them. Positive 4 high is going to become negative 4 high. Connect them. Positive 3 high is going to become negative 3 high. Connect them. 0 high is going to become, oh, invariant. Negative 3 is going to become positive 3. This here is y equals negative f of x. Looks like a fish. Shut up. Uh, by, by the way, though, you may have noticed most life forms, us included, are symmetrical. So right now, when they're trying to look at how cells develop, they believe that genetically, mathematically, what's going on here, replacing y with negative y, replacing x with negative x, that's going on in your DNA genetic code. The mathematicians are starting to look at that with the hope that someday, perhaps, if you lose an arm in an accident, we can bring the symmetry back. Go a new one. That would be nerdly cool if they could figure that out. 
What was that, Brett? Can they grow an extra pair of arms so you have four? No. I want to be Spider-Man! Shut up. Okay. This one's going to be red. Although then you could give yourself like a nice big hug twice. Yes. Someone would finally hug you. Um, sorry, besides your mom. Um, let's see. Red. Uh, negative. Oh, oh, it's a reflection. Oh, it's in front of the X. This is a horizontal reflection. So now instead of asking how high, how high, how high, I'm asking how far left, right, and taking the opposite. Instead of negative 4 to the left, positive 4 to the right. Instead of negative 3 to the left, positive 3 to the right. Connect them. Instead of negative 2 left, positive 2 right. Connect them. A little better than that, Mr. Duick. Connect them. Instead of negative 1, positive 1. Connect them. Instead of 0 left, right. Oh, trick question. Still stay 0 left, right. Invariant. Instead of 1 right, 1 left. And instead of 2 right, 2 left. I think that red graph is the image. This here is y equals f of negative x. Am I right? I think. Yep. And then, Asar, what does this one mean? x equals f of y. Oh, that's the, what I think is a better way to write inverse because it stands out. Oh, they got the x where the y is. They got the y where the x is. It looks like they've switched the x and y around. I like that much better. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you right now, on your test, I will almost certainly use the stupid little negative 1 because that is the convention by far the most popular one out there in the math nerd world. I'll do this one in green. That's right. How do I find an inverse? So... I'm going to say this to myself very carefully because this is where I make sloppy mistakes. Negative 4, 0 is going to become 0, negative 4. Negative 3, positive 1, positive 1, negative 3. Connect them. Negative 2, positive 4, positive 4, negative 2. Am I wrong? I counted wrong. No, I am right. Connect them. Negative 1, positive 4. Positive 4, negative 1. Connect them. 0, 3. 3, 0. Connect them. 1, 0. 0, 1. Connect them. And positive 2, negative 3. How about negative 3, positive 2? I think this green graph is x equals f of y. The inverse. Yep. On a test, I'll almost certainly only have you do one graph per question. The question was on a test if you don't label them. In, in all honesty, uh, yeah, I'd probably have, if I told you to label them, I'd have to get, and did more than one graph, I'd have to get grumpy because how would I know that you knew which was which? The most common mistake is kids get horizontals and verticals mixed up. So you might have graphed the vertical reflection thinking it was horizontal, the horizontal thinking it was vertical, but I couldn't tell. Because the two graphs are right. So, yes, in real life. Today, I won't be freaky. Give yourself a score out of nine, please. We looked last day at expansions and compressions. We threw a lot at you. So can you get out, first of all, lesson seven? And the homework. And I'll start out by asking, hey, any questions from here you would like me to go over? Now is your chance to ask. Did I make it, Isabel? Did I make it? Cool. Any from Lesson 7 that you would like me to go over? Carly, number 5. Any before, what was number 5? Oh, yeah, totally. Any before number five that you would like me to go over? So number one, getting the equations using the replacement method, that went okay. It's, it's substitution, but it's careful substitution, right? Okay. Number five, I would love to do 
number five. By the way, number three, did you notice that for a parabola, which is a bit of a unique shape, if you expand it vertically by a factor of four, you get this. If you expand it, or sorry, compress it horizontally by a factor of a half, you get this, which simplifies to this. The parabola is so symmetrical, Eric, that stretching it vertically, imagine if you had like, you've all played with a piece of rubber from a balloon or something like that. If you stretch the rubber vertically, it does get skinnier. And what you're recognizing is, as it turns out, a horizontal compression can give you the same effect as a vertical expansion on a graph. Okay. I thought that was kind of nerdly cool. Number five. Pick one. I'd love to do C. Okay. So here is my original f of x. And I think, Brett, my key points are going to be here, 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 and here. The top, the peaks, and the middles. What does that do? It's next to the x, so it's horizontal. Horizontal what? Well, it's because it's next to the x, it is backwards. So it's going to be expansion by 2 or compression by a half? Absolutely, expansion by 2. What does this do? It's vertical. It's no longer next to the y where it belongs, so it's no longer backwards. It is what it is. It's a vertical compression by a half. Mr. Duick? Yes, Trevor? How do you know when to use the word expansion and when to use the word compression? It all depends on the factor. In fact, what I do first is I find the factor a half, a third, three. And then if the factor is a number bigger than one, we use the word expansion. If the factor is a number less than one, like a fraction, we use the word compression. Will I take marks off if you call an expansion a compression or an a compression an expansion? Probably not, as long as you have the factor correct. But oh, for Pete's sake, let's use the correct language. So you ready? Brett, I'll do the new one in red. No, I'll do it in blue, because I used blue here. That makes sense. Right now I'm at 0, 0. If I horizontally expand 0 by 2, you know what I get? Still 0. If I vertically compress 0 high by 2, you know what I get? Fancy word invariant, and that answer is part of the question for part 3. Now, this point right here, horizontally expand it by 2. How far to the right are we right now? 1. Expand that by a factor of 2, please. 2. And I'm going to hover there. How high am I right now? Compress that by a half. That point ends up there. I'll do this point next. You know what, Mr. Duick? Use the technology so they can see better. I keep forgetting to do that. I'll do uh, this point next right here, this x-intercept. Horizontally expand it by 2. Instead of 2 to the right, you know where it's going to end up? Instead of 2 to the right, you know where it's going to end up? Expand it horizontally by 2. So instead of 2 right, you know where it's going to end up? 4 to the right. Vertical compression. How high is it right now? Compress that by a half. Still 0. Not invariant, because it did move sideways, but its height ended up being invariant. So right now I have this. I think the next point I would move would be this one down here. So if I horizontally expand it by 2, right now it's 3 to the right. Horizontally expand that by 2, it's going to end up 6 to the right. Right now it's negative 2 high. Compress that by a half, negative 1 high. It's going to end up right there. The last point I'll move is this one right here. Horizontally, by a spot in the pattern now, I think it's going to be instead of 4 to the right, 8. And instead of 0 high, uh, oh, instead of 0 high, 0 high. That blue graph is what this black graph becomes 
underneath that image. So far, so good? Yeah, yeah? What's the domain? How far left does the blue graph go? How far left does the blue graph go? Zero. How far right? So this domain would be zero less than or equal to x, less than or equal to eight, or equal to because it is touching. What's my range? How low does this new graph go? Negative one. How high? Uh, range is going to be negative 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to positive 1. And invariant points, the only one that was invariant was that guy there. Is that okay? So they're going to mix and match for the rest of this question. Uh, oh, they've added a negative. It means there's going to be a reflection in some of these two. I, I'll just go step by step. Make a list of your transformations. Hover your pencil above the point and walk through each one until you get to the end of the list, and then plunk your pencil down and put the dot there. Is that okay? Is that okay? Whoever asks, else asks, I don't mind doing more if I have to, but is that all right? Any others on this page, that, including number five, that you would like me to do? Any others on this set of homework here? What else did I assign? Oh, number six. That was it. Then we also did some questions from lesson two cubed, lesson eight. Are there any from here that you would like me to go over? This is your chance to ask. Three? Love to. Three is tough. Can I do what? Can I do B? I don't mind doing B and then you can try A and C on your own. The fact that I was going to suggest that because that way you can still practice it. But these are tough. I find if they give me the graph trying to figure out the equation, probably the trickiest concept for me to wrap my brain around. So I'll give you some hints for how I'd approach A. We're going to do B. Glancing at A, here's what I notice. Those two points stayed invariant. You know how I know? Because the same graph, both graphs go through those same points. You know what that tells me? It tells me we didn't do anything horizontally. Because if we'd done something horizontally, the thick graph would have been thinner or thicker. We might have done something vertically. To check that, I would look at my y-intercept and I would say oh yeah instead of 2 high it became 10 high I think a is a vertical expansion by 5 let's do B B looks like it has two different transformations how can you figure that out so fast because my y-intercept changed and my x-intercepts changed that must mean there was a x-intercept horizontal and that must mean y there must have been a vertical There's two of them let's see I like using x and y intercepts, Trevor, because they give me good reference points. Alex, how high is my x, sorry, my y intercept originally? Good, thank you for noticing the scale. How high is my new one? What would turn a 4 into an 8? I think vertical expansion by 2. Right? Let's look at my x-intercepts. How far to the right, Mitsu, was this original x-intercept over here? Positive what? Where did it end up? Positive. I can't hear you. Positive 3. You know what? I think we've had a horizontal compression by half. Must have. They want the equation. Trevor, anytime they want the equation, I fall back on my replacement method. Vertical expansion by 2, that means we're going to replace y with 2y or half y? Half y. It's always backwards in the replacements. And horizontal compression by a half, 
we're going to replace x with 2x or half x. <coughs> I gotta be fussy, not two. Thank you. So, uh, for some reason, instead of using the letter F, they're using the letter P, but whatever, F of X, P of X, I'll just put a P where the F normally goes. I think it's going to look like this. A half Y equals P of 2X. Is that okay, Ellen? Well, not really, because you know what? They get the Y by itself. So instead of putting a 1 half right here, you know what they put right there instead? Which is why I left a little space there. I'll bet you that's what it says in the back. I'm pretty sure. That's the equation of that thick graph. Okay. These are tough. Like, so the trick is, look at your x-intercepts, look at your y-intercept, any other key points that you can as well. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay, who, sorry, who asked number three? Okay. Oh, did I answer your question okay? Yes? So try 3A and C, and I'll still go over that more if you want me to. Any others? Yo! For which one? B or A or C? B, yeah? Uh, my key points, when in doubt, I use intercepts. See, the reason I, I like intercepts is on your x-intercept, if they do something vertical, will it change at all? So that means I can ignore the vertical if I don't know what it is still. I can figure out the horizontal. And on your y-intercept, if you do something horizontal, will it change at all? No. Nope. So that means I can ignore that and just focus on what's going on vertically. So x-intercepts and y-intercepts, usually though, they'll have clear key points. These are also tricky graphs because they're curvy ones. It's a parabola of some type. Is that okay? Any others? Did I assign any others? Oh, I assigned number six. Okay. We're good? Okay, I'm not going to ask you to hand those in. You can hang on to those. Now you have your workbooks, so we can actually write stuff in there. And we have a problem. And this is the problem we're going to have to deal with. Oh, I'm not going to pause yet. Can you turn, please, in your workbooks to Lesson 9? It's called Combining Transformations, Part 1. And it's on page 59, page 5-9. And once you've turned there, look up. Supposing I want to do the following two transformations. Supposing I want to move 3 right, and I want to do a horizontal expansion by 2. I want to move 3 right, and I want to do a horizontal expansion. So lesson nine says combining transformations part one. In previous lessons, we've learned the replacement method and what replacements do to graphs, how they affect the functions. But the issue is going to be combining transformations. Warm-up number one wants us to walk through what we just did with Trevor and Mitsu, so turn the page. And on page 60, they want to walk us through the same thing, but with vertical. I can't do vertical transformations in real life. I guess I can have Mitsu get on Trevor's show. Ah, no. We don't want to give Mitsu a little headache. Um, so uh, turn the page. Page 61. Here is the key. Order of transformations. It says, we've seen that two transform when two transformations are applied to the graph, the order in which the transformations are performed may or may not make a difference to the final graph. You know what? What we're going to do is we're going to always assume it does and play it safe and just always do it in the correct order. Even if we could have done it in the wrong order and gotten the right answer, we're just going to say, let's always do it right. When does the order not matter? If you're doing two slides or two stretches or you're doing one vertical and one horizontal. When does the order matter? If you're doing a horizontal stretcher slide and a horizontal stretcher slide, two horizontals or two verticals. But you know what, Trevor? 
don't bother memorizing that. What I just told you is we're always going to assume it matters and just always going to do it in the correct order. What is that order, you ask? Here it is. We're always going to do the expansions, compressions first, reflections, and then translations, or I've been calling them slides. So translations slash slides. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. I can be really clever here, I think. I think, I think. Yeah. Slash slide. Oh, cool. How can you remember it? It's alphabetical. E R T. Or if you use the word slides, it still works. E R S. Or if you use the word compressions instead of expansions, it still works. Anyways, it's alphabetical. Expansions, compressions, reflections, slides. That's the order that I'm going to pound into your head. And I've just lied to you. As it turns out, actually, there is more than one type of bed mass. There is more than one order that you can do these things in. And it depends on how they're written. When I first started teaching this, Haley, I had the kids memorize both orders and how they're written. And then I said, wait a minute, that's dumb. Why don't we memorize one order? And if it's not written the way we like it, take one line to rewrite it the way we like it and memorize one order. So what's the order? Expansions, compressions. Reflections, slides. Expansions, compressions, reflections, slides. Example one. It says, describe a series of transformations required to transform graph A to graph B. And I'm going to look for them in the correct order as well. I'm going to start training my mind now. Look at graph A and graph B do you think any stretching has gone on? Or are they different sizes from each other? I don't think so. I don't think we've done a horizontal stretch. I don't think we've done a vertical stretch. Those look like they're the same size. So expansions, compressions, check, none. Reflections. Which way does your original graph A point? To the left or to the right? To the left. Which way does graph B point? To the left? Or to the right? To the right. We've had a horizontal reflection. They've replaced x with negative x. What about a vertical reflection? The answer here is I'm not sure. If they'd flipped it, I wouldn't be able to tell because this graph is symmetrical horizontally. So if we're not sure, we'll assume they didn't. It's like the parabola. You could say, well, you flipped it horizontally, and then you flipped it horizontally again, and then you did it again. There was three negatives in front of the x. Well, yes, I guess technically that could be right. We're always just going to go with the simplest possible example. So here, because it opens this way, I mean, they might have flipped it this way. I can't tell. So we'll assume no. Expansions, compressions, check. Reflections, check there's one for sure. Slides. This goes back to Brett's great question. How can we find key points? You know what key point I'm going to look at here for this sideways parabola? I'm going to move the vertex around, I think. The vertex started out here and ended up here. How has it been moved? Count two, okay. Two left and and not only have they replaced x with negative x, they've replaced x with x plus two, and they've replaced y with y minus three. You know what the function equation would look like? We're just going to walk right down this chain. Eventually, you may get good enough to do this in one step in your head, but for now, I wouldn't risk it. The first thing they did was that. They replaced the x with negative x. Then you know what they did? They replaced the x with a what? I gotta be fussy. They didn't replace it with a positive two. 
They replace the X with the what? The whole thing, the whole thing. This is, this is where it's very important. Say it louder. Because here's what that means. They drop the Y down. They drop the equals down. They drop the F down. They drop the bracket down. They drop the negative down. If you replace the X with an X plus 2, you have to put it in brackets. Because if your original X was all negative, your replacement has to be all negative. And if you just say plus 2, I guarantee you'll miss the brackets if you say that to yourself. What's the third replacement that they did? They replaced the Y with a Y minus 3. And then, Kara, I don't think they'd leave it like that. They'd get the y by itself. Get the y by itself. What would I do with that minus 3? Plus it over. This, if I gave you this as a multiple choice question, and I said, write in function notation what's going on here. y equals f of negative x plus 2 plus 3. That's a graph that has had the following done in this order. A horizontal reflection, because the negative is inside the function next to the f. Two left, three up. Example two. It says, describe the series of transformations required to transform graph A to graph B. Okay. We won't do these ones in function notation. We're just going to list the transformations. Oh, let's look for stretches first. How wide is graph A to begin with? How many squares? Count. Four. How wide is graph B? How many squares? Eight. What would make a four turn into an eight? Horizontal what? Ellen. Bye. They've replaced x with a half x. Oh, later. How tall is my graph originally? Four. How tall is my new graph? Four. Did they stretch it vertically at all? Okay, check. Reflections. You know what? They might have flipped this graph around horizontally. Is it symmetrical? I couldn't tell if they flipped it, so I'll assume they didn't. And they might have flipped it vertically, but it's symmetrical. I couldn't tell if they flipped it. So you know what? Reflections, none, I'm going to assume. Always go with the simplest case. Slides. What would be the easiest point to figure out here? I'll give you a hint. Not the corners, because the corners are getting stretched. The easiest one is the middle. You know why? What's the original coordinates of the middle? What comma what? 0, 0, which means any slides are going to be direct one-to-one -one because the stretches would not have affected them to begin with. So, start it out here, end it up here. How has this graph been slided? Slid, slud, slid, slided, slid. Moved. Translated. How many left count? How many down count? Look up. Watch. That's the equation. Now, I did that all in one step without substitutions, and I'm not expecting you to get anywhere near there yet. But take a look now that you see it. Is there a horizontal expansion by 2? Yeah, there's a 1 half in front of the x. Okay, there's brackets, but it's in there with the x. Is there a 4 left? Yep. Is there a 7 down? Yep. Okay. B and C is going to be the same idea, but I think you're getting the hang of it. Next page. 
It says, describe which transformations are applied to a graph of a function when the following changes are made to its equation. Does the order in which the transformations are performed affect the final graph? What I said to you, Brett, was I don't care whether it affects it or not. I'm always going to do it in the correct order. The only time I won't do it in the correct order is if they specifically say to me, do it in the order that we tell you, because maybe they want me to get a specific shape. And the only way that we can get a specific shape is to do it in their order. Okay? So I'm not going to worry about the does it affect it or not. I'm just going to do this orally. Replace x with 3x. What's that going to do? Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Expansion by 3, compression by a third. Which one? Compression by a third. Replace y with y plus 4. Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. 4 up or 4 down? 4 down. By the way, the order here wouldn't matter because you have one horizontal and one vertical and they won't affect each other. Here, replace x with 2 thirds x. Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Expansion by 3 halves or compression by 2 thirds because it's that thing that flips. It's an expansion by 3 halves. How did you know it was an expansion? Because 3 halves is bigger than 1. Replacing y with negative 3y, that's two things. What's the negative do? Vertical reflection. What's the 3 do? Vertical compression by a third or expansion by 3? Compression by a third. And what's that mean? To what? To left. Here the order would make a difference because you have more than one x. And this order would be just fine because you did expansions, compressions, reflections, and flat. <coughs> Example four. Now, what does it say in boldface in example four here? Okay, they want to force me to get a certain equation, I guess. And the only way that they can do that, Kara, is to say, do it in the order that we told you, even though it's not the bed mass. Okay, if they say that, I'll follow their instructions. You ready? Uh, a horizontal translation to the left two units. So let's do the graph first. I'm going to hover about the vertex. Two left. I'm now right there. Yes? Reflect in the x-axis. Now, if I'm reflecting in the x-axis, is that a vertical or a horizontal reflection if I'm reflecting in the x-axis? Think carefully. It's ver You know what? I'm going to write down here vert ref so that I don't do something silly. All right, let's walk through this. Starting at the vertex, two left, vertical reflections. So instead of one up, where will I end up? Instead of one up, where will I end up? One down, right? There's my vertical reflection. Vertical compression by a factor of one quarter. Yuck. Instead of negative one, you know what my height's going to become? A quarter of that. You know what? I'm going to eyeball it. It's about... Hey, Mr. Duick, why don't you make it big so they can see? Yeah, I can fit this up. So what do we say? Two left, reflect. It's about a quarter of it. I'm going to eyeball it. It's right about there-ish, sort of. And then what's the final thing? Three down. One, two, three. You know what? The vertex, the new vertex is right there, hanging in midair. Following their order. I'm not quite sure if I'm right, but if I do a couple of more points and the parabola starts taking shape, I'll know I got the vertex in the right place. So let's move this guy here. That's a nice point. Ready? Two left. Vertically reflect. Instead of too high, you know what it's going to become? Negative two. Vertically compress by a factor of a quarter. So instead of negative two, what's one quarter of negative two? Who's good at fractions? Negative a half. And then one, two, three down. Since the parabola is symmetrical, Brianna, I'm going to do this one. Two left. 
reflect vertically. So negative 2. A quarter of that. Negative a half. 3 down. About there. Yeah, I don't really like that. Oh, it's okay. Oh. What else would I try? Would I use this point here that's hanging in midair? Probably not. Oh, you know what? This guy. <clears throat> you ready? Two left. Reflect. Instead of positive five high, you know where it's going to end up? Negative five high. A quarter of that. What's a quarter of negative five? I think negative 1.25. So I'm going to eyeball it. Negative 1.25 would be right about there. Three down. One, two, three. Uh, this boy. No, this boy. Here. Two left. Reflect. Yeah. Quarter. Three down. One, two, three. You know what? This is kind of, is it not? Kind of. Is it not? Sort of. Oh, geez, I botched that. It's sort of looking like a parabola. You know what? I think I'm right. I'm not going to do any more points. Instead, let's see if we can get the actual equation. I'm going to go back to the small screen. Horizontal translation. What's the replacement if I want to go two left? Replace x with So, here's my original equation. y equals x squared plus 1. That's what I'm starting out with. If I replace x with x plus 2, y equals x plus 2 squared plus 1. Right? Vertical reflection. Replace y with... With what? Negative y. My new equation is negative y equals bracket x plus 2 all squared plus 1. I'm not going to get the y by itself yet. I'll do that at the very, very, very end when I'm done. Vertical compression by a factor. Vertical, replace y with a vertical compression by a quarter. Replace y with what? 4y. So I think it's going to be negative 4y equals bracket x plus 2 all squared plus 1. 3 down. Replace y with 3 down. Replace y with, I'll give you a hint, y. Everything's back. Everything's backwards. Everything in the replacements. Everything's backwards. So it's not going to be y minus three. What's it going to be? Now, look up. That negative, is that a y? Say no. Then drop it down. Is that four a letter y? Then drop it down. Is that y a letter y? Say yes. What I'm going to replace the y with? Better put brackets then because I'm make, replacing that whole thing. x plus 2 squared plus 1. I could now get the y by itself if I wanted to. I would multiply the negative 4 into the brackets first to get rid of the brackets on the left side. Forget it. It says verify with a graphing calculator. Nah. Turn the page. I'm going to pause here. We're going to continue part two when I see you folks again on Monday, Monday, Monday. I usually spend two days on this because this is really the meat and potatoes. This is the whole point 
of this whole lesson. So what's your homework? I think I would try number one, number two, three is fine, okay. Uh, I'm really not a big fan of number four. I'm going to pass on number four. I'm really not that big on you knowing whether or not... It, you know what? I'm going to stick with one, two, and three right now. And if you're behind in any of the other homework, this is your chance to get caught up. You've got 15 minutes.